Greetings everyone and welcome back to the lesson. The subject is advanced taxation. Today we're going to introduce a new chapter known as tax investigations. This chapter is arranged in eight sub chapters. Number one is tax fraud. Number two, civil and criminal tax investigation. Number three, events which may trigger an investigation. Number four, back duty and in-depth in examination, number five, customs and excise investigations, number six, negotiation for settlement, tax amnesty, tax penalties and enforcement for standing taxes, number seven, types of tax audit and their significance, then the last uh, subtopic is application of relevant case law. So these are eight areas. We will be studying each area at a time, beginning with the first subtopic, which is a tax fraud. In this lesson, we will cover tax fraud. And by the end of this lesson, you should be able to clearly define tax fraud, including its key elements. Then at the end of the lesson, I'll give you revision questions. So welcome to the lesson. The subtopic is tax fraud. So what is the meaning of tax fraud? What is the meaning of tax fraud? What is the definition of tax, tax fraud? define tax fraud. Now, candidates, tax fraud is the illegal act of intentionally falsifying information on a tax return or any related forms with the aim of reducing the amount of tax liability owed. It is an illegal act. It is an illegal act of deliberately or intentionally, all right, of intentionally falsifying tax information on a tax. Uh, return or any related um, uh, any related forms and the aim of tax fraud is to reduce the amount of tax liability that the tax heir owes the government. In other words, it involves deliberate deception of tax authorities. It is the deliberate deception deliberate deception deliberately deceiving the tax authorities deliberately lying to the tax authorities by falsifying documents with the aim of reducing the amount of tax liability and it involves a range of activities there are range, it involves a range of activities, okay? Tax fraud involves a range of activities like under-reporting income, under-reporting income, activities such as under-reporting income, A taxpayer may deliberately under-report. These are activities involved in tax fraud. One, under-reporting income. Deliberately reporting less income than was actually um, uh, earned. Under-reporting 
income deliberately inflating inflating deductions is another act of tax fraud inflating deductions or expenses that means claiming deductions for expenses that were never incurred or sometimes exaggerating the amount of the expenses that's an act of tax fraud concealing concealing assets is another act of tax fraud concealing asset to conceal is to hide hiding assets or income streams often in offshore accounts uh, in order to uh, avoid reporting them for tax purposes that is an act of tax fraud concealing assets The fourth act of tax fraud could be using false or altered documents using false or exaggerated or altered documents alteration of documents using false documents altering forged documents and that could include forging receipts forging invoices um forging account uh, accounting books in order to misrepresent financial transactions using forged documents uh, when uh, making returns that's an act of uh, tax fraud we can add another act which is related to um claiming false deductions of credits claiming false deductions or credits claiming false deductions or credits claiming false deductions of credit a taxpayer can take credit um for things like um say charitable contributions uh there could be things like business expenses uh, educational uh, expenses that were never made claiming such deductions uh could be also an act of tax fraud we can also say uh, intentional non payment intentional non payment is yet another act of tax fraud non payment intentional non payment intentional non payment what does that mean this means intentionally failing to pay taxes that are owed intentionally deciding not to pay that's an act of uh uh tax fraud illegal activities illegal activities engaging in illegal activities to evade taxes such as money laundering or the use of shell companies to hide income this is yet another form of uh, tax fraud so i'm giving these examples to help you understand to help you get the meaning of tax fraud because the objective of this lesson is to is that by the end of this lesson you should be able to clearly define tax fraud so tax fraud can be defined by giving examples by giving activities that surround um tax fraud so we said 
one is under reporting number two inflating under reporting income this is under reporting incomes number three concealing assets number four using or uh, using false or altered documents number five claiming false deductions or credits number six intentional non-payment deciding just not to pay taxes and number six illegal activities now candidates is important to note that uh, tax fraud is a serious criminal offense that can result in heavy fines that can result in uh, heavy penalties and even imprisonment and tax fraud differs uh, from tax avoidance it's important to note that tax fraud differs from tax avoidance which is a, a legal practice tax avoidance is a legal practice of using the tax regime to find ways to reduce the amount of tax payable but staying within the letter and spirit of the law but tax evasion candidates is a subset of tax fraud and it refers to the illegal methods used to avoid paying taxes and to help us understand this subject uh, deeply uh, we are going to answer a few questions related to tax fraud the first one being what are the key elements that constitute tax fraud and how does it differ from the legal practice of tax avoidance get the question I repeat what are the key elements that constitute tax fraud and how does it differ from the legal practice of tax avoidance I've just said that tax avoidance is a legal practice of using the tax regime to find ways to reduce tax liability but staying within the law so the question is what are the key elements and candidates the key elements we've identified them here the key these are the key elements or activities surrounding tax fraud the key elements constitute or include the deliberate deception um, against tax authorities uh, it, 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 it involves concealing assets using false or altered documents claiming false um, deductions or credits and so on you understand we have answered the first part of that question what are the key elements that constitute tax fraud the second part of the question reads how does it differ from the legal practice of tax avoidance how does tax fraud differ from tax avoidance now tax fraud contrasts with tax avoidance which involves using legal methods to minimize tax liability such as investing in tax deferred retirement plans or uh, claiming allowable deductions and credits that is uh, one way to avoid tax so tax fraud candidates we can also say is criminal and intentional it is deliberate as at the same time criminal whereas tax avoidance is legal and within the bounds of the law so let me take another question in the context of tax fraud describe what is meant by willful act to evade tax laws and provide an example of such behavior describe what is meant by willful act to evade tax laws now candidates 
a willful act to, uh, to evade, a willful act to evade uh, tax loss means intentionally taking actions to avoid paying taxes that are legally due. And an example of this would be intentionally not reporting cash income to the tax authorities. That is a deliberate violation of tax laws as opposed to making a honest mistake on a tax, uh, on a tax form or tax reform which would not be considered willful or fraudulent. Let's consider the third question here. How does falsifying documents contribute to tax fraud? And what are some of uh, what are some common types of documents that are manipulated in this fraud? I repeat, how does falsifying documents contribute to the to, to tax fraud? And what are some common types of documents that are manipulated in this fraud? So again, these are two questions. How does falsifying documents contribute to tax fraud? How does falsifying documents contribute to tax fraud? How, how does falsifying documents contribute to tax fraud? Now, candidates, falsifying documents to commit tax, tax fraud might involve creating fake invoices to overstate business expenses or altering personal income records to underreport earnings. And such acts are intended to deceive the tax authorities into believing that one's tax liability is lower than it actually is. We've answered the first part of this question. The second part of this question reads, and what are some of the common types of documents that are manipulated in this fraud? Now, common falsified documents include receipts, include uh, ledger books, include uh, employment records, and so on. Then moving on to the third or fourth question, why is underreporting income considered a form of tax fraud? And what are the consequences of this action for both the individual and the economy? Two questions again. Why is underreporting income considered a form of tax fraud? Now, underreporting income is considered a, tax, a form of tax fraud because it involves intentionally reporting less income than what was actually earned to reduce tax liability. And the other part of the question is, what are the consequences of this action both to the individual and the economy. Now the consequences of underreporting income can be severe. The consequences can be severe, including fines, including penalties, and even imprisonment. And economically, it undermines the tax base, leading to deficit in public funds, which could affect uh, government services and the overall economy. That's obvious. Obviously. It is obvious that under reporting income by companies or individuals undermines the tax base and reduces the sources of government revenue which is required to meet or to offer government services. That's a uh, an obvious consequence. Now we are going to take the last question here, which reads, explain the difference between tax avoidance and tax evasion, and why one is considered lawful, 
while the other is a criminal offense. Now, candidates, avoidance, as earlier stated, tax avoidance, is the legitimate use of tax regime to one's own advantage, to reduce the amount of tax that is payable by means that are within the law. For example, claiming um, all legal deductions and credits. On the other hand, tax evasion entails taxpayers deliberately misrepresenting or concealing the true state of affairs to a tax authorities in order to reduce their tax liability and includes dishonest tax reporting, such as declaring less income, uh, less profits, or less gains than amounts actually earned. Or it may include overstating deductions. So candidates here, tax avoidance is lawful as it complies with the the laws or the tax code while tax evasion is a criminal offense because it involves deceit, it involves concealment, it, it, it involves a violation of the legal duties of the taxpayer. So we've answered five questions related to what we have studied today. Now in closing, I'm going to give you uh, today's assignment, remember, in our today's lesson, we are, we've just introduced the, uh, the, 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 the chapter, Tax Investigations. We've defined uh, tax fraud. We've given activities that surround tax fraud. I've uh, answered five questions in relation to uh, tax fraud. In closing this lesson, I'm going to give you assignment. I'm going to read... Uh, the assignment, this is a tax fraud. Revision question number one. What are the specific actions that differentiate tax fraud from a simple error or omission on a tax return? Number two, how do tax the Kenya Revenue Authority detect and investigate potential cases of tax fraud? Number three, what are the legal repercussions for individuals or corporations found guilty of committing tax fraud? Number four, identify any recent high-profile tax fraud cases in Kenya and discuss the methods used to, to perpetrate the fraud. Then lastly, what measures can taxpayers take to ensure they remain compliant with tax laws and avoid an intentional tax fraud? Thank you for attending the lesson. In our next session, we will uh, study the second subtopic, uh, which is civil and criminal tax investigation. Thank you. God bless you. Bye-bye.